Scout SV, the SV stands for Specialist Vehicles. And what this program is, is a family of vehicles to um, provide a capability to the British Army for manned reconnaissance. Uh, really the way they talk about it is, this platform will be the eyes and the ears of the British Army. If you think about it from sort of below the turret and down, um, we've built it to the latest survivability standards, which means that um, for each of the occupants, um, that they're going to be in an extremely safe vehicle in the unfortunate event that they, they have to survive an IED blast. Um, in terms of above the, the base platform, the turret itself is very sophisticated. It's large, it's roomy, and it includes um, a suite of sensors, a primary and secondary site from TALUS, um, a CT-40 cannon, uh, that's a joint venture um, cannon that's been developed by the British and the French together. It incorporates a new type of ammunition that has not been used before, um, which will give uh, the British Army a lethality capability that they haven't previously enjoyed. People might not think that software is, is high technology, but when you're taking data from a number of different sensors, you're integrating it so that some actions by the vehicle could be automated, some require man-machine interface, the ability to get the data that you can now collect off of the platform to other assets, another Scout SV, a command and control vehicle, an airborne asset like an Apache, is a capability that doesn't exist today, frankly, with um, the ground vehicles. The uh, Scout SV program, is, um, as contracted, is six variants. So we have uh, the Scout, which is the turreted version. We have the PMRS, Protected Mobility Reconnaissance Support, which is um, a vehicle that carries a total of six soldiers in some kit that can go out on an operation um, and support reconnaissance activities for those six would be dismounts. Um, we have a repair vehicle in case a vehicle needs to be repaired in the field. This thing has a crane on it and go out and can pull an engine out, put an engine. In fact, it can do it to its own, to itself. Uh, we have a recovery vehicle. If you had to recover something that was battle damaged, you can pull that back to, to a location. And then the two new variants that were added as part of the production contract, a command and control vehicle, um, which will accept data from a number of assets, including Scout SV, uh, to allow decisions to be made sort of away from the battlefield. Um, and then lastly, an engineering reconnaissance vehicle, which uh, provides uh, capability for both mobility and counter-mobility uh, against uh, an opponent. Um, so those are the six variants. The way that the program was structured with a com what we call a common base platform uh, was envisioned from the beginning to be able to easily adapt to other mission roles. So we have these six variants. We expect that there will be some more variants in the future. Um, the pr probability of export of this vehicle when a different customer looks at a platform like this, there's usually three things that they'll want to have unique to them, and those are their own communication suite, their own electronic warfare, and their own weapon. And we've designed this vehicle to be adaptable in those three areas that you can take 70% of the vehicle or 80% of the vehicle and make those changes to accommodate a customer's unique requirements. So it really takes a combined effort because so much of the of the products that go into a vehicle are, are specialized. And so you go to companies who specialize in those particular products. I mentioned the sites with Talus as an example. We have a laser warning system from Elbit. We have um, a Kongsberg self-defense weapon. We have a turret that's being developed and integrated by Lockheed Martin. Um, we have a very special engine from MTU. We have a transmission from Rank. So it takes a large number of suppliers focused on their products and we flow a lot of requirements down to them to make sure that we stay within weight, power, etc. Um, and then we, what we do is we bring that all together and integrate it into a single system. There's always a um, sort of a knock-on effect when you try to take new technology and put it onto an old platform. Uh, we originally started this program uh, and it was based upon the ASCOD vehicle that was um, built by General Dynamics European Land Systems. But because of the plethora of requirements that we have to, to meet the British Army's needs, what we find is, you know, if you, if you try to just add something on that has some sort of an impact on space weight and power, uh, which can then have a further effect on the rest of the vehicle systems, 
So when you, when you design and develop a vehicle initially, you always design it with some future weight growth because vehicles are like people. They always tend to get heavier and heavier over their life. But you do reach a point where it becomes very difficult to just bolt on new technology because either the power isn't available that's required, the space isn't really there. Um, one of the requirements that we have on this program that's never been applied to um, a track vehicle program in, in the British Army is the 95th percentile human, right? So the 95th percentile human is a pretty large individual and what that does is that drives the volume inside the vehicle because you need a cocoon of survivability around that person and when you start growing volume that also grows weight. So those are the types of challenges that you have uh, and it's one reason why this vehicle is a little bit bigger than previous vehicles is driven by the 95th percentile and the blast survivability requirements. We really feel like we're leading the way with the uh, land open systems architecture and um, because of that, in terms of adding on new LRUs, uh, new line replaceable units, new capabilities onto this platform, we have the space, we have the weight growth. Um, the Scout variant is about 40 tons um, with growth up to 42 tons. So you've got two tons to put more kit on. The open architecture will allow easy adaptation for additional uh, electronic units and that's typically what you're going to upgrade, right? It will be things around sensors and sites and, and those types of capabilities are typically the thing that you're going to add and this platform is, is very well suited to that.